Bethany Turner and neighbor. Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Writer Podcast. Thanks, Mark. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. I live in Mancus and you live in Cortez. In Cortez. Basically. Uh, 20, 20 miles away. Yeah. 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 So practically throw a rock at you. I don't yeah. know. I'm not that strong, but you know, in the grand <laughs> scheme of things. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, we'd have to clear Mesa Verde National Park though with that rock. So I think yeah. the height issue more than the distance. Yeah. We need a really good, you know, slingshot sort of situation at least. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, fortunately I get to see you a fair amount uh, down here in Southwest Colorado um, because we're both involved with Four Corners Writers, which is an up yeah. and coming group down here, but we're both obviously members of Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers as well. So it's great to have you on, especially the night before, the day before the yeah. launch of book number, book number what, Bethany? Total, it's book number nine. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hard to believe. And, and you know how it is when you're always, you know, you're editing one, you're promoting one, you're writing one sometimes. And it's, so I've had to count that number. So I'm like, is that right? Can that be right? But <laughs> kind of surreal but very cool that's terrific well we're going to get into the new book but just briefly um you know just tell us a little bit about your writing career and where you're from and give us a little, just tell us how you got into this business and what led you to book one sure sure you know i was um well i grew up in kentucky spent i was in kentucky until i was 21 and um but my husband is born and raised out here. And so we got married when I was 21 and um, moved out here. And um, fun fact, we, we actually met on the internet. And so <laughs> like we never lived in the same state until we got married and then, um, you know, moved out here and here I've been ever since. And um, but so once I was out here, I really just needed a job. Um, and so I started as a part-time bank teller here in Cortez and turns out I was okay at it. And so over the next give or take 13 years, um, I kind of just kept climbing and, and ended up being vice president of that bank. And it was as I was really kind of probably the peak of a career that I never knew I wanted kind of thing. Um, I realized, you know, it was kind of a look back and say, hang on, how'd I get here? This is not what I ever intended to do with my life. Um, I mean, I, it wasn't that I disliked it. It was just, and it wasn't that I even knew what I had wanted to do, but it was just, uh, it had just happened, you know? And so looking back through that, and it was a very stressful time um, as far as, some things that were happening at the corporate level. And long story short, I I burned out and I needed a creative outlet because I had I'd actually been a theater major in college and had loved theater and drama and with the job and then raising two young kids at the time. Um, I didn't have time for theater, you know, so it suddenly became, well, I got to get this stuff out of my head somehow. And that's when I started writing. And so that was about... Uh, 2011, 2012, in, in that zone, um, where I really, I'd never thought, you know, I know so many of our illustrious number, you know, uh, it's, it's the dream and it's, it was the hobby forever. It, it really wasn't that for me, to be honest, I didn't mm -hmm. know that I loved to write until I started writing and that's all there was to it. And so I started writing and yeah, there, there was no turning back from that point. And here we are. Yeah. Did you have any kind of role models in terms of books you like to read and said, I want to write a book along these lines or similarly to this particular author? Yeah. I don't know that I thought of it in those terms, certainly, but what I definitely loved was um, I loved romantic comedy from the get-go along the lines of, um, well, I said Jane Austen, even though, you know, it's obviously a different, um, period and and different style and all of that it is early romantic comedy and um so you know I certainly loved Jane Austen I loved Helen Fielding who wrote the Bridget Jones books and um Nora Ephron who's mostly known for her film uh screenplays and such but uh, you know so it was very much these funny females writing about love is what I 
loved to read. And, and when I started writing, it was never, um, I, I, I didn't think about it for the longest time is the truth. So it wasn't, this is what I want to write, or this is what I'm going to try. It was more just, there were characters in my head and they started telling their story in this first person, almost keeping a journal sort of way. And that very much became my style um, of what I write to this day. And it just kind of morphed into something a little more real, but I honestly didn't give it a lot of thought. It was just how my brain worked, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So how did you go about uh, looking into the publishing business from Cortez? And I, you know, just, I mean that in terms of now that I've moved down here, I, it's not quite the same as being in Denver or New York city where there's just a lot of writers to ask questions about. Did you think I'm going to get this first manuscript uh, published some, some way, somehow? You know, I, that very first one, which actually ended up being, I started telling this story that was stuck in my head and it ended up being three books of a series essentially, um, just cause I just kept writing and writing and writing. And um, it really wasn't until that point where it was like, this may actually be a story somewhat worth reading. Like I hadn't even thought of it that in those terms, but I had a few friends who um, I was letting read it and there was enough encouragement that I started kind of looking to see what was out there. And I will say I, I jumped into, okay, I, I've got to have an agent. I've got to, um, I'm going to go this whole way. And I got 76 rejections on that first book. Um, 76 query letters that either got no response for the most part, or a few that made it a little bit, but didn't go any further. Um, and so I decided with those first three books, that first series of books to um, self-publish them, which again, so this was 2012-ish. And I will say self-publishing for the most part wasn't what we what it is today as far as how we think of it. Yeah. It was it was early days. Yep. And I had no idea what I was doing and no neither did anyone else for the most part. So you're just kind of trying to figure it out. And in the end, I got books out there and um, that was fine. But I, you know, then it became, okay, let's move on to the next book. And that was kind of the point where I think it got real for me. And, and I did realize um, I really, I think this next book um, deserves a better shot than I'm able to give it um, on my own. And so for that book, I actually, I sent out a few submissions, but not a ton. Um, but I got a few rejections and then I got, um, I submitted to a manuscript submission service actually that, mm. um, was, you know, you had to pay to do it, which everyone's like, this is sketchy. I don't know. And, and again, I didn't know what I was doing, but, um, it, it ended up being, you know, you submit to this service if they like you, um, you end up on their list. And if you're on their list, there's like a one in a thousand chance that you get in front of the eyes of an editor or a publisher or an agent. Um, it was a chance and that was all I was going for. But actually like 13 days after that, I heard from my first publisher and, um, and it, and that was that, you know, and I, um, so that one, that one got published um, and I stayed with them through my first three books. Wow. Wow. So you just basically feeling it, trying to just keep energy into it and pushing it out there. But yeah. 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 And it was also yeah. interesting at the time because I quit the job at the bank um, because I was burned out, because, you know, and it wasn't, oh, I'm going to go become an author. And this, you know, it's, I was realistic enough to know that most of us don't make a living at this in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so um, it wasn't that, but it was a, I need to figure out my life again. And so I took almost a year off, which was not easy for us as a family, like financially, um, but it was an incredible year as far as spending time with my kids that I hadn't had a chance to and, and different things like that. And so there was such, so there, it was kind of an equal, there was a tension between, um, on one hand, I was on the clock because I knew I was going to have to go back to work at some point soon. I, I couldn't keep it up. Um, but at the other hand, I felt freer than I had in my adult life. And 
that was actually, I think that ended up being a beautiful marriage as far as um, publishing, because the writing was very free and the publishing was very, um, I felt the urgency of the publishing, but not in the writing. The writing was freedom and fun. And and so it was, it was a beautiful time. It really was. That's great. Well, let's let's jump ahead a little bit because we don't want to lose the headline around the new book uh, coming out. But uh, <laughs> excuse me, which um, I will let you reveal the title. It's uh, very yeah. cool. And uh, <laughs> tell us about it. We're a day away. Does it feel does it still feel pretty amazing to be on the eve of yet launching another book? It does. You know, I, I can't imagine this will ever get old. It it definitely um, it feels different than it did in the early days because, you know, you understand all the things that go with it more the, the longer you do it. And, um, you know, and, and it's kind of a thing. I was talking to another author friend the other day and she has a book coming out tomorrow as well. And we're like, have we not released these books yet? Like, it feels like, you know, you've been talking about them so long. It's like, seriously, is it still not out? So there is that. And yet the wonder of it is wonderful. And um, so, yeah, the book is called, um, well, it's called Cole and Layla are just friends, a love story. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a romantic comedy, of course. Um, and it's two lifelong friends who um, some major life changes happen that caused them to kind of start looking at their relationship through a little bit of a different filter than they've ever had to before, a different lens. And, um, you know, they're, they're those, they're those two people who every, everyone else has known for their entire lives that these two are perfect for each other and they don't see it. So, um, it was a lot of fun to spend time with those, them. So yeah, Cole and Layla are just friends. Yeah. Is is do you set up a certain town or universe that all your stories are involved in, or are they different settings? I never had before. They'd all been different settings, um, very much story to story. I, I love setting stories in New York, so that tends to be a repeat for me because you know I feel like only in New York can you walk three blocks and you are in a different world. You know, it's so there's so much potential. Um, but this one actually, Colin Layla and the book before it, which was called Bryn and Sebastian Hate Each Other, a love story. Um, it yeah. takes place in a fictional um, Colorado mountain town called Adelaide Springs. Um, so it's, and then actually the next book that'll come out in 2025 is set there as well. So I've got these three in this world. Um, oh, and that was fun. You know, it was the first time I've created a world really in, in that regard and not you know, having to base it on real locations and all of that. Um, so to be able to completely manifest this little town and yet, of course, you know, being in small Colorado towns, definitely pulling a lot of reality into it. And and yeah, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Do you, I know Cortez, you don't really think of Cortez as being, quote, in the mountains, um, even though you can see them pretty clearly do have a certain town in your head when you write those yeah geographically it was creed um okay. this one it was yeah. it was um geographically it was a great location because you know creed is just off the beaten path enough that it's not easy to get there and yet as the crow flies it's not that far from anything really yeah and so and yet beautiful and um so you know, I, I haven't spent much time in Creed. I think I've all, honestly only been there once. Um, but I did a fair amount of research on that and some other little towns. But Creed is is the prevalent. Yeah. 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 Good theater town. Speaking of theater. Yes, town. it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Very cool. Wow. So do Cole and Layla and Brynn and Sebastian know each other? Do they show up in each other's books or are they completely separate? They show up. Um, it actually, <laughs> it started, okay, so the book that comes out in 2025, um, the the start of that book is actually the first one I started writing of this group ah. of people. And that was about 10 years ago that I started writing this story. And time after time after time, when it was time for a new contract, 
I would say, Ooh, I've got this one in the drawer. That's, you know, it wasn't done, but it, I have 60,000 words ready to go. It's, you know, let, let me work on this one. And it was never the right one at the right time. And I finally actually gave up on it. Um, I thought, and um, around like when I pitched it for Brynn and Sebastian hate each other and it didn't go, um, I gave up on it, but I thought, but there's, I love this little town. I love some of these people. Um, I'm going to use those and turn it into a different story. So that actually became a um, completely different story, but in this town that I had created for these other characters and Cole and Layla at that point um, are, um, well, I already had them in the future as marrieds. And so I thought, okay, so we're <laughs> moving this story back a few years. Um, so they're just friends at this point. So in, in Bryn and Sebastian, they're, um, they're side characters. They're this group of really, there's five of them that were the class of 2003 in Adelaide Springs. And that's it. Um, tiny, tiny little school. And um, so we deal with these five kids who are, of course, now 40 year old adults. And um, so there's a lot of intersect and the friendships that have been these lifelong friendships at varying degrees. Gotcha. Gotcha. Who are these books for? What's your target audience? You know, I it's interesting because I feel like um, women my age in particular are um, those of us who I would say, if I'm speaking in generalities, who loved Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan in the 90s and have never gotten over it. You know, there there's a whole group of us who are like, they don't make them like that anymore. You know, I really felt like that's who I've always written for. Um, but what's been interesting is I'm kind of discovering um, they're reaching a younger audience than I thought which is mm. so fun. And I'm, I'm kind of amazed by that. And I think it's just uh, everything old is new again. And, you know, where we've, there's, I think it's a lot of kids, honestly, who are the ages of my kids who are 21 and 18 now, and their mother forces them to watch their favorite movies from back in the day. And, you know, I think that's what's happening. That's all I can figure out. So, um, so yeah, but it really is, they're very, um, they're wholesome. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean saccharine or um, prudish or anything like that. But I really want it to be, it is a book that I feel like three generations could share. And yeah. um, I kind of love that feel and, and yet not that hallmark syrupy, nothing against that, but um, not that, but um but a little more, you know, real life issues, real life things happening in this wholesome, feel good, laugh out loud, hopefully, uh, package. Yeah. Well, if Bryn and Sebastian hate each other, a love story, uh, it seemed from my perspective to do very, very well. Is that the best book you've had out? So far, yeah, I'm well, so yeah. far, obviously. I yeah. mean that as from what I know so far about because the last yeah. um reports I've seen, um, it was doing pretty well. Of course, I haven't really seen numbers since like March. Um, so but it it definitely got some new attention um that I hadn't gotten before, and that was huge. It, it um you know, it was an Amazon editor's pick for best romance, which was not even on my radar. Honestly, it was like, what what does that little banner even mean? I, I had no yeah. idea. Um, and it pardon me. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. And it um and it got it was in Sam's Club, which I'd never had one in the big box stores. And so yeah, I, I think it did okay and yeah. definitely got some new viewership opportunities for sure. Yep. Have you seen that the fact that Brandon Sebastian did well, that your readers are going back through your previous books? And, yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's been fun actually, because, you know, like my first um, three traditionally published books with my first publisher, um, mm -hmm. those two of those books are out of print, but, you know, of course the audiobook and the ebook are still readily available and um, suddenly yeah, new reviews are popping up on these books that I honestly thought we were done with, you know, so 
that's been tons of fun. Um, and then, um, yeah, going back to my, my first ones with my current publisher, um, they've done a great job of, um, some very savvy deals, you know, so, um, audible deals or, you know, whatever the case may be on, on some of those. So I, I think we're definitely, there's some momentum. I think there's some momentum, which I'm so happy about. We should probably mention your publisher. Yeah. So I'm with, um, it's a, <laughs> an imprint of HarperCollins um, called Thomas Nelson. Um, but yeah, HarperCollins Publishing. And they just, they've been incredible. They really have. So, um, and I love, you know, being one of the, I'm sure it would be amazing to be at Harper Collins, you know, just at the um the flagship the mother, brand the or yeah, the, yeah, the mothership. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it would, but I have to say, being part of one of the imprints where you you get a little more intimate teams and yeah, and things like that. You have the beauty of that combined with, you know, I won't lie, that Harper Collins name opens doors. And um, so it's 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 been wonderful, but it's still very much that feeling of a, you know. I know everybody who touches my book at the publisher and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Right. Well, one thing we wanted to talk about, um, you know, is just your recent decision. You mentioned this to me and I thought it would make a great topic for um, a podcast. There are lots of folks out there looking for their first agents and usually they're unpublished. Um, but you now have a very successful track record um, behind you and, you're back out and maybe there's news on your end. We don't know yet, but you are back out seeking representation because just the sheer business of managing your career takes time away. I assume it takes time away from writing. Absolutely. Yeah. It, you know, having gone through that submission service uh, for the first book, so I did get signed without an agent. And so I didn't have an agent through the first two books. I think it was, um, and then I signed with an agent at that point, and I was with an agent for one deal with the former publisher, and then the um, the initial deal with Harper Collins, um, and then she left the business, <laughs> just up and left the business, which, you know, okay, um, but suddenly it's it's you have this instant panic of, I don't know. I think on one hand, everyone we've we've come to believe or told ourselves that. We can't make it without an agent in this industry. And there are aspects of that where, oh, it's so beneficial to have an agent. But the truth is, it's like, it's not that you can't make it. It's just, it all looks very different and it's a lot on you. And, and, but I was very fortunate to be, I was already established in with the publisher. So I looked at it as, um, you know, I can handle I can handle re-signing contracts. I basically just want the same things. I'm not, you know, I'm not driving for some big six-figure deal. And, um, you know, I've got good relationships. And so I did take it on for a while. And it was great. I did three new contracts that way, I think. Um, but yeah, like you said, I, I've reached a point where, you know, it's not even the workload so much as the mental distraction that I'm ready to be done with for a while. Um, just that feeling of having to take off my creative hat and put on my business hat, which of course we all have to do that anyway, but it's like, I, I don't want to pour over contracts and try to figure out the legalese and all of those things when I could be writing. And um, so, yeah, but, so I'm, I'm looking again and I've discovered very, very quickly it's a whole different world when you are established and trying to find an agent. Um, in some ways, I mean, there are beautiful things. You have connections, you know, people you've, you've got these doors that are open to you and to Ben. And it is true. You know, an open door is all we need a lot of the time. If we know our stuff and are willing to advocate for ourselves and it's the open door is the hardest thing to get. So that's been amazing. And yet, if you look through all of these um, agent sites, their websites, their submission guidelines, all of these different things, I've yet to find one that tells you what to do if you're in the position that I'm in, um, because they wow. want a completed manuscript. It's like, well, 
that's not how I work anymore. Or I haven't for quite a while. I've worked to a contract that's already been signed. And yeah. Um, yeah. so, and it's like, okay, if I take a pause long enough to write a book, you know, it's like, no, that's, I, you know, so it's confusing. <laughs> and um, so really all of that to say um, the way I'm going about it is, is using the connections, which I think the networking and our friends and all of that in this industry, it's just one of the most valuable things for any of us is um, because I, I think obviously there are exceptions to every rule, but I think the vast majority of everyone I've met in this industry um, is, is happy to support other authors. They really yeah. are. Yeah, sure. That is Absolutely. the majority. And so if we can, you know, so it started with just me talking to my friends and saying, Hey, who's your agent? You like them, you know, and, and going from there. But um, so as far as the updates, I mean, I'm in talks with one who would be, I mean, it would be a dream scenario. And I really hope that by the next time we talk, I can report on that, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's, and again, not impossible, but it just looks different depending on which stage you are currently in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you are in an unusual situation because 99% of what agents see coming in is from unpublished writers looking for their first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, one thing that I've really wanted to do, like I'm interested in film adaptation possibilities, which of course I think most of us are. And, but I feel like right now romantic comedy is having another moment yeah. culturally and yeah. so that's something I don't want to miss out on also. And so looking at it from that perspective and you almost feel like, okay, what I bring to the table is not only hopefully a bit of a track record, but I also bring a backlist of titles just ripe for the picking, hopefully. So, you know, we shall see. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I have a hunch of your dream scenarios going to come through my one kind of crazy idea is I was wondering if your publisher would say, you know, here's a couple of agents we enjoy working with and, mm. you know, that are in your same area. And maybe your publisher would even say, these are class people who know your world. Oh, that's an incredible idea that I hadn't thought of. Thank you for <laughs> saying that. Yeah, I love that idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, thanks. Yeah, you know, yep, yeah. <laughs> and for those who are sort of, listening to this whole discussion, I have to also put in a plug for coming to Colorado Gold in September because that's a fabulous place, the conference in, in Denver to meet agents, to pitch agents. Um, and there's many, many opportunities outside of the pitch sessions you can sign up for. There's many opportunities to just hobnob, coffee, beer, drink, whatever it might be, lunch, banquet time, standing in yeah. line for for a buffet time, things like that, where you're going to develop a little bit of human relationship and you can sell yourself as well as sell what you write. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, well, yeah. Good, good luck, Bethany. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. You, you seem like, given the fact that you're willing to, um, you know, share your earnings with an agent, you're willing to give up probably 15% of what's coming in the door. Um, you seem like somebody who's really just enjoys the writing process itself and you want to maximize that. Tell us about your, your process, your day-to-day -day process. Yeah, I, you know, I actually, I, I did an interview yesterday, which, in which I said, and it was one of those things I didn't even realize it till it just came out of my mouth, but it's true. Um, I do love to write, but I've gotten to where I think my favorite part of the entire process is connecting with the readers once the book is done. It, it really is. And so, um, you know, so my day-to-day -day process is as much that as writing. It It, it is. And, um, you know, I do have a family and full-time job as so many of us do. And um, so when I get a chance, you know, I've got to be very specific about um my writing time and I'm one of those writers I wish I could be the writer who's on the subway not that we have a subway and Cortez of course but you know be on yeah. the subway and get a few words in on the commute it's like 
that's just not me. I need to block out the world. I need an uninterrupted block of at least an hour or two, um, ideally an entire eight hour stretch where I don't leave. And um, so I tend to basically Mondays and Fridays are the only days I write typically, Mm -hmm. unless I'm on a tight deadline in which every moment counts. Um, But Mondays and Fridays, I will, when I'm writing, I will spend six to 10 hours doing nothing but writing. And the rest of the week, whatever time I have is about connecting with readers and um, be it the social media stuff or the newsletters or the texting or whatever it may be and live events. And so I really feel, um, yeah, that's the day to day for me. And then, um, and then of course, like I said, until you get to, oh, it's deadline time. Sorry, family. Sorry, friends. I will see you in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I got to hammer this book out, but I I tend to write a book. Um, you know, I I have a six to nine month time frame usually written into my contract, and yet I write the book in six weeks. It almost <laughs> always happens that way. You know, I will I'll spend um, I'll spend six or seven months writing five thousand words, and then in the last month to month and a half, I write. 75,000 to 100,000 words. <laughs> and and yet it would not work it would not work on the front six six weeks, front end six weeks. It wouldn't. It's it's the it's the continually turning it over cuz whether I'm writing or not, I'm always writing in my head. Um I'm sure you identify I mean I know you feel that. I <laughs> you know, it's, it's like the it's the best. So, it's, it is. It's the best. It's the best. It, It's like, that is the joyous thing that I don't know how to capture in words to explain to people the joy of writing it. It's that sort of feeling. And when you sit down at your computer and it's literally just, I hope I can type fast enough um, because it's all there. It's, oh, that makes the the little more stressful times well worth it. (laughs) Yeah. I just love that feeling of, you're you're writing you're thinking you there's just a part of your brain you kind of assign at least for me you just kind of think you're working on a a problem and you just sort of tell it to work on this and pick up stuff throughout the day or maybe Mm -hmm. out of nowhere an idea will just pop up in that little part and just say hey what about this and you'll go oh yeah yeah." Uh uh-huh and most of the time you just keep filing it all the way there and then sometimes there's that moment where it's like okay, get out some paper because that's literally a line I don't want to lose or a, you know, a, a whatever it may be. And it's just, oh yeah, it, there's just nothing like it. It's, it's a high. It really is. It It yeah. is a high, yeah. the endorphins that yeah. get going through your brain. Yeah. Well, you definitely know yourself and your process and that's all that counts. You meet yeah. deadlines and yeah, that's great. Yeah. Which I think, you know, for a long time, I, I really thought I needed to conform and do it the way I saw other authors doing it. You know, it's, it's, for instance, it's like, I wish I could plot a book, but I can't plot a book to save my life. Yeah, that's right. I know that back yeah. you're the same way, aren't you? Yeah. And yeah. it's just, I mean, that's great. But for the longest time I thought, well, that's how the real writers do it, you know, because, because it seems so much more put together and, and all these things, but you know, there is, there's been a great freedom to come with the, okay, I've done this enough now. I know what I'm doing. Not to say I know it all, but like you said, I know myself, I know my process and um, yeah, it's okay. It it may look like a chaotic, frightening tornado to those who do it differently, but it works and I'm going to get the book done and I'm having fun. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of a two-part question before we get to your book or author recommendation. I'm wondering kind of two parts, two questions sort of from the same moment. I want you to tell me as you sit here today on the eve of publication of your ninth book, if you can really remember yourself walking out of the bank and if if you're just sort of, if you can capture that feeling of making a career decision. And I also wonder if that moment in terms of thinking about your characters and how they choose um and be purposeful about their life choices if that decision for you back then has some sort of has it played itself out in your books wow um 
excellent, excellent questions. Um, yeah, you know, it was, it was such a scary feeling and because, you know, I say, and I meant when I said it that, um, you know, I didn't expect to make a career as a writer at the minute. And yet the dream is beginning to fester, you know, and it it's this feeling of, well, who knows, maybe this is it, maybe I will. So you're, you know, you're struggling with all these different things and the fear and the responsibility and all of those things. And I, um, I would say, going to the second part of your question, I would say that every book I've written has grasped onto some part of that. Like, I don't think I've gotten past it um, because, well, the very first book that was traditionally published was a woman basically complete upheaval in her life. And then, um, you know, I had one called The Do-Over that a woman walks into a boardroom expecting to be, you know, named the um, senior partner in a law firm. And she's informed that she's being put on, um, uh, you know, leave of absence while they investigate her for embezzlement. What was that word I just made? Embezzlement. And um, mm -hmm. so she has to completely rethink her life and reevaluate. And if I look at every book, that's what they all are in some ways. And I, I think that is because um, of what I experienced and it being, whether or not it ever true, I don't know how to say, it, because obviously it's worked, um, you know, and that's not to say that I've made it. It's not that. And yet who I am, who my family is, the joy I find in this day to day. Um, oh, it was the best decision I ever made to walk out of the bank. And whether I ever end up on the New York Times bestseller list or whether book number nine, well, 10, because it's done, whether book number 10 is the last mm -hmm. one I ever get published, whatever. Um, either way, it was the best decision. And um, so I think there's something, especially writing these romances, because if, you know, I think we've all experienced we all experience those emotions in different ways, whether it is a romance or whether it is family or whether it is within ourselves, whatever it may be, those feelings that go into that are so powerful. And um, those are those feelings. I, I mean, basically that was me. That was my meet cute, as we call it in rom-com of, <laughs> of um, you know, how the love story started with writing. And, um, you know, you can trace it through the entire arc of the story. And yeah, I guess I'm always chasing that for my characters, just like I chased it for myself. Wow. Well, nothing, I can't imagine any better. Yeah, it's just wonderful. That was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, great. Well, um, as we wrap up, trying to always share the love, uh, shine a spotlight on a writer or a book you want to recommend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am loving um, a romantic comedy writer, surprise, surprise, um, named Annabelle Monahan. Um, she, her new one comes out tomorrow as well. And she, she's the one that I was talking with actually, who was, and she's one of those, just to be clear, I'm not just promoting her because she's my friend. It's one of those things where I'm amazed that I got to become friends with her. Do you ever feel when you meet your, the authors you love and like, they're my sure. friend now, it, it never that's surreal yeah. still um, because I'm such a fangirl of Annabelle Monaghan and she writes these stories. Um, I'd say probably a lot of that same thing, although in a different way that, um, that I'm always chasing of that. What am I going to do with my life? How can I make it the best version um, based on where I am, where I've come from and where I'm heading. And, and yet got a love story and a lot of comedy wrapped in there. And that's just as good as it gets for me. So Annabelle Monaghan. <laughs> Great. Do you happen to know the title of her new one? Um, Summer Romance actually is the name yeah. of her new one. And you'll it's if you look for it, you'll find it everywhere. It is um she's been hitting all these awesome milestones. And so I think it's gonna be a big hit for her. I'm really excited. Great. Well, Bethany, such a pleasure to chat with you. Good luck with uh, Cole and Layla are just friends a love story and uh maybe we'll get a chance to do this again with uh, book 10 and 
I would love it. Thank you so much, Mark. Great to talk to you. Thank you.